All right, John Oaks here at Hangster's Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location today. And today, um, I've got the pleasure of going over this newest addition to our inventory. Again, I know you can't miss this one because of the color. This is a 1972 Plymouth Duster 340, obviously here done in the sublime green uh, color here on the exterior. A very um, eye-catching color. It pops right at you there. And you can see ours has the, the matte black decals and so forth on it too. So just want to kind of go over a few things here before we kind of really get started here. So as far as the front end on this car goes, we've got as far as the fenders and this hood, these are fiberglass AAR front fenders. This is a fiberglass hood. Obviously you see it's got that scoop on it there that was synonymous with the Mopar cars back in the day. And again, with those matte black decals, it really kind of set it apart. Um, the other thing that kind of really sets this car off are these wheels and tires. Um, these are a uh, American Racing wheel. They're a special edition uh, 18 by 8 wheel, aluminum wheel, fog spoke, and it's got the painted uh, um, centers there. Um, so again, it, it real nice, um, you know, option for this particular car. Now as far as the panel fitment and alignment on this vehicle, you can see all your panel fitments here, your gaps on your doors, and again, those are very uniform. When you look at those fenders, you look at back here at the quarter panel and look at your gaps. You've got pretty much the same gap front to back on this car. Elevations are good, body lines all match up on a car too. Um, we do have driver's side mirror done in chrome here. The glass is in great shape on this too. Uh, the windshield, side glass too, all of that in great shape. Again, there's no chips or cracks in any of the glass on this car. Um, all of your moldings, now again, around your fenders you don't have any, but you still have your drip rail molding here done in body color. If I run my finger through the rain gutter here, it's nice and smooth through there too, so again, no issues there. We'll open our door up, and we'll take a quick look inside from the driver's side. You're going to notice, obviously, it's got the front bucket seats. Those are the high back bucket seats in really good condition. Black carpeting and headliner. Uh, bench, you know, full bench seat in the back. It does have the factory seat belts there. And then, of course, the dash. That's all factory instrumentation, all of which works. Uh, and then there is one aftermarket gauge. It's an oil pressure gauge so that you can just monitor that a lot more closely. Uh, center console, wood grain trim on that with the floor shifter. The dash pad itself is in great shape. And the steering wheel, just again, your stock duster steering wheel. Uh, now your weather stripping and your seals up around your windows here, even your seal down the side of this quarter window here, all of that is in really good condition on this car. Now we'll close this door up. Again, it shuts nice and easy. Good solid thud there. It's closed nice and tight. As we come back here, you'll notice again that black match stripe. You've got the 340 down here too. All of your side marker, I guess, reflectors in the most case with these Mopars. Those are all in great shape. The gas cap is even done in the body color. Now, when we come around the back side of our duster here, again, you've got the typical duster decals back here on the tail panel. The duster 340 there, just as I said. As far as the trunk lid itself, you can look at your gaps and your elevations on the trunk lid. Those are very nice. Your rear window, again, the glass condition is in great shape here. Your moldings around the window, those are in good condition too. Back here at the taillights, lenses as well as bezels around the, the taillights, those are all in great shape. The back bumper, chrome, in very nice condition. And then just below, you can see those oval kind of slash cut exhaust tips back there that poke out through the back. We will open our trunk lid up just to give you an idea of what that looks like. Just need to find the right key and the right orientation. So with the trunk lid up, first thing we can tell you is the key does work in the latch. Uh, the underside of the trunk painted the same sublime green as the rest of the uh, exterior of the car. The inside of the trunk is in great shape, got a nice trunk mat in here, and again your trunk weather stripping. 
is in excellent condition too. It meets right in the center. You don't see any pieces torn out or chunks or rips or tears. It's all in nice shape. It's going to seal up very nice from the outside elements. And you can see you've even got your trunk light in there that works right off of the switch when you raise that up. So again, very nice inside. Now, you do have a pump back here. This is a um, vacuum pump for the uh, like the brakes and so forth so that you have the, the vacuum there to run those. Because again, this car does have uh, a bit of a mild cam in it, which does rob the motor a little bit of some vacuum. So that's just a nice little feature that people will do just so that you can operate those uh, brakes on the car. Now, as far as the rest of the car goes, Again, just around the passenger side, more of what we just saw on the other side. Excellent condition as far as our body panels go, those wheels that I spoke to you about. Now the size of the tires, I did not go over that yet. Uh, up front, we've got 235, I want to say, uh, I think 45s up front, 245, 50s, 18s on the back. So that's your tire sizes. Again, glass on the passenger side. Same thing as the other side. No chips or cracks. It looks really good here. You can see your gaps over on the passenger side now. Again, really uniform. Body lines all matching up too with everything. We will open this up and take a look just from the passenger side so you can get perspective from both passenger and driver side of the interior and how nice that really is. Again, the upholstery on the seats looks really good. The dash pad, there's no cracks or anything in it. Again, just a really, really nice looking vehicle here um, as far as the condition of the metal and the interior. Just everything about it, just really, really nice there. So, as we continue to walk around our car, we'll just get ourselves back up here to the front of the car um, where again, you're gonna see uh, more so that hood scoop there. Again, it's in excellent shape. The whole hood itself. You can see your gaps and elevations on the hood. You can see the windshield too, again, in excellent shape. Wipers, those are in good condition too. Um, now again, um, you've got your duster, your uh, 72 duster grill here, all blacked out. So that's a nice look to go along with those matte black decals. You do have the chrome front bumper here. Now as far as your uh, marker lights or your parking lights up here, lenses are in good shape there, headlights, those are just your traditional sealed beam unit glass lenses and those are in great shape too. Now, I'm going to just open the door up so we can pop our hood open here and uh, we'll talk about the drive line that's in this next and some of the options that we see underneath that hood as well. So again, the hood pops from inside, that does work. It does have the secondary latch so underneath here. Just find that and push up on it and that's going to raise it up. Um, now we do have a hood prop here, so I'm going to go ahead and find, I don't think there's a place particularly for it. Again, it's a fiberglass hood, so what you don't want to do is have a set of uh, hood hinges or springs that really hold down on this hood, because again, you could flex the hood being fiberglass and you don't want to do that. Now you can see the underside, they've done an excellent job with the paint on this. So your shell underneath here for under the, the, uh, for under the hood, that's been painted the sublime green. The rest of the underside of the hood's been painted the black up underneath. Now the engine compartment, just as Mopars were, the whole engine compartment was done the body color. So that's uh, correct the way that that is done also. As far as the motor goes, let's go there now. This is a, a non-numbers match 340 cubic inch motor. Um, very strong running motor here. You can see it's got the chrome uh, air cleaner on it. It's got the black wrinkle finish Mopar valve covers on it. A Wyand aluminum intake. That's a, I believe a Wyand Stealth aluminum intake. 1406 carburetor there with electric choke on it. The ignition, that's been upgraded to an MSD ignition. So you've got the MSD distributor, blaster SS coil as well. That's gonna help deliver a little hotter spark to those wires. And again, the wires have been upgraded to a set of eight millimeter plug wires to the superconductor MSD wires. Um, as far as the radiator, you'll notice it's been upgraded to aluminum. It does have a shroud on it with a six blade aluminum fan on it for cooling. 
We've got an uh, aftermarket like a chrome alternator over there as well. Now when it comes to the brakes, um, that's where they've kind of spent a little money too on this car. Brakes, they've got a chrome master cylinder, obviously chrome booster as well. This whole car has been updated to a Willwood disc brake system. It's power brakes. You've got a six piston caliper up front, four piston caliper on the rear, and all four rotors are drilled and slotted. This thing stops like no other around here. So again, excellent brake system on this car. Now, as far as the headers go, these are ceramic coat, long tube headers. We've got two and a half inch dual exhaust the whole way back, and this is MagnaFlow exhaust. So you know you're getting a good exhaust system when you go with MagnaFlow. It sounds great too. The only thing that this car does not have really isn't needed either on this car, and that is power steering. These cars are so light up front, you typically don't need that. They steer just fine once you get up and going. Um, there's no problems whatsoever. As a matter of fact, sometimes that power steering may react a little too quickly for some people's uh, likeness out there. So again, um, that would be the only one thing uh, as far as this car goes that you could possibly maybe even think about upgrading, but again, not needed. Um, that's pretty much it for under the hood. Now, as far as the rest of the drive line on this car, and again, we'll go over this on our underside video when we show you all, all of this, but we do have a Torque Flight 727 automatic transmission on this thing, and we also have the Mopar 8 and 3 quarter rear end. It's a 323 gear ratio, and it is the pause unit. I believe Mopar used the, the terminology of shore grip uh, rear end back in the day. So, but it is just a pause unit, 323 gear ratio. So again, this car, it's not going to over rev going down the street if you're cruising around or, or out on the highway taking a drive. Uh, should be a good gear all around um, that you can enjoy and not have to worry about. So. That's been it for the outside of the car, inside, under the hood, in the trunk. So the next thing we'll do is get this on our lift, go through the underside with you, and then finally, as we always do, we'll fire that motor up and let you hear what that Mopar engine sounds like. All right, so we are standing underneath this very nice 72 Plymouth Duster 340 here. So we're going to go through this car just as we always do, uh, pointing out to you all of the steering and braking components, uh, suspension, frame, floors, driveline, etc. while we're underneath here. Again, as I said, the car is very, very nice underneath here. So starting here at the front, as far as our suspension goes, pretty much your typical front suspension for one of these dusters. Um, you've got your stamped steel uh, front uh, control arms, both uppers and lowers. Your ball joints on both of these are, well, actually on all four of them, are in excellent shape. It does have the sway bar on it. Sway bar looks to be in great shape. Those frame mount bushings, those are in great condition as well as those sway bar end links too. Everything looks to be almost like new condition underneath here. As far as the paint goes on it, you can tell by that too that everything looks to be fairly new. Of course, your K member up front, your cross member, uh, this thing's in great shape. Doesn't look like it's ever been beat or banged on anything at all. Looks fantastic. As far as the steering and the braking on this car, we do have, it's just manual steering for this vehicle, but of course these Dodge, uh, or Plymouth Dusters I should say, um, they are a uh, pretty light car up front, so you really don't need that power steering. The brakes though, power brakes on this car, and they have upgraded the brake system on this. This is a full-blown Willwood disc brake conversion all the way from front to the back. It's got oversized uh, discs, uh, rotors on the front. The rotors are actually bolted to a brake rotor hat, which does have safety wire connecting all of the bolts, so nothing is going to back up. It has red painted six piston calipers up front and red painted four piston calipers on the back. All of your rotors are drilled and slotted for heat dissipation and better braking. So again, you're going to have phenomenal brakes on this car. Might as well keep here out at the uh, corners of the car here with wheels and tires. And, uh, fantastic look for this car. They've got 18 inch wheels on it. They are a, an American Racing Torque Thrust 2 Special Edition wheel and they've got the black painted uh, the spokes uh, on them. So again, super nice look for this car. 
and wheels are as far as tires. Um, they are Lexani tires on the front. We've got 235 40 18s on the back, 245 50 18s back there. Just a little bit of difference in the size, but the tread's in great condition on these tires. Now, for our drive line, we have it's a non original a 340 motor here. Uh, it is hooked up to a Torque Flight 727 automatic transmission. It does have the flywheel cover on the front of it to keep dirt and debris out. As far as the oil pan and the transmission pan, everything is super clean, uh, free of any leaks or drips whatsoever. Then we've got our uh, transmission cross member here. The actual mount for it too is in great shape. And again, back here at the seal where your uh, slip yoke slides into the transmission. That is dry as well. Then of course your drive shaft, it's a balanced unit. Uh, and then the rear end, it's a Mopar 8 3 quarter inch rear end. It does have a set of 323 gears in it. And it has the pause unit or what Mopar typically call the, the short grip uh, differential. As far as your rear suspension, you can clearly see here it's got the multi-leaf rear suspension in it. Just a typical set of gas charge shocks back here. Again, the car rides very, very well. Then the other big thing that you see underneath here is up front, you're gonna notice we've got a set of ceramic coated long two headers, followed it up by a full MagnaFlow exhaust system. Now again, MagnaFlow sounds excellent on these older muscle cars gives it a nice throaty sound. Again, you can see the condition of these mufflers. They're in great condition. Of course, we've got tailpipes and then a set of chrome exhaust tips that exit out behind the car there as they should. Frame and floors, again, you can just see from the video. The frame sections on this car are super straight on it. The floors are in excellent condition. I don't see any patching at all on there. It's just a very light coating of um, undercoating and then sprayed black underneath so again very nice all your brake lines and fuel lines and so forth run it right along the floor here and along your uh, pinch welds of the car again all in nice shape and you've got the emergency brake here too that's all hooked up to back to your rear disc brakes a lot of times you'll see these cars with the disc brake conversions that aren't hooked up with the e-brake this one is so everything's there everything's all functional as well fuel tank on the car fuel tank looks to be in great shape also no dents or dings in it painted black straps are in great shape all other mounting hardware also in great shape and as far as the trunk floor goes from what i can see again your fuel tank kind of blocks a lot of that from the underside but we do have that spare tire uh, provision back here too and everything looks good and solid back there as well um, so that's pretty much it again um, just to mention your front suspension like I said pretty much typical of the Mopars you've got the strut rod front suspension along with your torsion bars here so again that's all uh, pretty much your your Mopar type suspension up front so that's it for underneath again very nice looking here underneath uh, we're going to go ahead and drop it down off the lift now and go underneath the hood. We'll fire that 340 motor up, let you hear exactly what it sounds like with this MagnaFlow exhaust. 